Good morning, good morning, good morning. Very stupid clock to everyone. Welcome to another episode of Smelling Tea. I am your host, Tiffany Daniels. And <clears throat> like always, at stupid o'clock, folks, my allergies are acting up. And also, we are going back to that horrible world known as the Judge Rotenberg Center. Now, before we go ahead and get going on to part four of Jennifer Masumba's story, just a few disclaimers. First of all, you will find the link to part four there in the description box, as well as other pertinent links to the Stop the Shock campaign. The two most important being the tin plates, templates, 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 people, where you fill out your name. Click on your senator representative to send it to their office in order to remove funding from the JRC. That's one template. Number two is the template to stop harmful bleh, restraint. I can't think. Improper restraint and other adversives in schools. Folks, that's the sort of thing that has caused many of the deaths that we have experienced in a neurodiverse community. So please get those templates out. Also, if you haven't signed the change.org, shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition, get on it. These folks are slippery bastards that have literally gotten out any little bit of trouble they have found themselves in due to the treatment that they use on their students since 1986. The only way out that I can possibly see that they are not going to be able to somehow turn around so that they can continue their torture on disabled people is to get them shut down. So please sign the petition. Okay, also, stupid o'clock, I am barely coherent. If I mangle any words or sentences horribly, my apologies in advance. Okay, so without further ado, JRC Survivor Speaks Out Part 4, and as always, we read the disclaimer from ASAN here. So this was put out on November the 24th, 2014. The Judge Rotenberg Center is a residential facility in Massachusetts where disabled residents are subject to electron shock, sensory assault, food deprivation, prolonged restraint and seclusion, and a host of other horrifying and aversive treatments. The United Nations has condemned the JRC's treatment of its residents as torture and the disability rights advocates have been trying to get the facility shut down for over 30 years. The Autistic Self-Advocacy Network has previously published an in-depth piece about the history and the practices of the JRC, which if you click that link, you can click right here. And we've gone over it on this channel before. This post is the last of a four-part series written by Jennifer, a survivor of the JRC. We are extremely grateful to have her permission to publish this brave account of her own experiences with the so-called treatments the JRC provides. Alright, so here, this is uh, Jennifer Masamba again. After seven years, my family and I finally got the choice for me to leave JRC. Oh, thank God. I came to my new program knowing nobody, but just happy to be free from there. But it was not easy. The GED did not help me, but in fact made me worse. Although I was masking my impulses at JRC, I started to have a lot of trouble when I left, even worse than before I went to JRC. That's, that's pretty true. When you're out from underneath all that traumatic control, you come out of shock. People with PTSD, we act out. We become somewhat self-destructive. I had no control over, of myself. I was afraid to talk to staff about what was wrong, 
because I had been trained at the JRC that feelings don't matter and saying them will get you in trouble. I had lost my ability to speak to staff and explain my thoughts and feelings. I was afraid all staff were out to get me. I was extremely jumpy and really hyper. I was not like that before JRC. Mr. Meanie Mew. Sorry, guys. My co-star is over there whining. Sorry. It took me two years for me to feel worthy again and feel like part of the world. I had start from scratch learning how to control myself. So this is pretty common when you've suffered extreme trauma. When you have PTSD and you're autistic, we go into, I've described it on this channel before, it's called, we call it autistic burnout, where we will literally regress to a point, for lack of a better term. We'll regress a little bit. We'll go backwards. There will be behaviors that we didn't even really have before during, that comes out during burnout. And considering everything they put her through, it does not surprise me at all. All that she went through autistic burnout it really doesn't but this time it was different I am back on my medicine that helps me I could talk to my doctor or to staff about how I felt if something was bothering me they would help me find another way to deal with it instead of punishing me for my reaction to it god what a concept right that's called Common sense as opposed to ABA. JRC had a saying of, don't avoid behaviors, just consecrate them. So if someone was crying, for instance, a staff member couldn't ask them what's wrong, but had to pinpoint and punish them for crying at inappropriate times. Jesus. When I first left JRC, I was so used to keeping things inside that I would just react to things around me. But my staff member was patient with me, and I started to learn that I could tell her what I was feeling. For example, if the room was too loud, I could tell her, and we would go outside for a break from the noise. Simple solution. But at JRC, when it was too loud, I had to sit with it until I couldn't anymore and ended up banging my head. ABA folks that... They talk about desensitizing you to sensory by making you put up with it. It doesn't work. Okay? It doesn't work. You can't just simply force someone to endure something like that that causes them little, literally physical pain. Okay? And expect them to behave normal without at least some type of noise-canceling headphones, all right? It's literally like someone standing behind you. Neurotypicals, hear me. It's like literally someone standing behind you and simultaneously banging cymbals directly right over your head and rubbing sandpaper as hard as they can on your chest and expect you to concentrate and be coherent and act normal. Okay? <clears throat> Hopefully that will kind of explain it to you. JRC treats its clients like they are not people with feelings or emotions. I did not learn how to cope with things there or help myself. Now, if I get that itchy impulse feeling down my back, I get up and take a walk or jump up and down or even say, I feel like hitting something. I like punching bags. Punching bags are great for when you get that urge. I'm actually suffering from autistic fog brain today, so you better bet that I am going to find my, oh, I'm a, God, I can't think, a little hacky sack, and I will probably kick it around before I get on clock today just to get that constant sense of irritation out of me. But I don't do it. I just say it. Then I feel relieved and go on with my day. <coughs> <coughs> now me, punching bags are my friend. 
uh, punching bags and stress balls and hacky sacks or that's why I exercise all the time weights just using weights will get the agitation out of me at GRC if I said that I would be punished for threats Jesus. at my new program they help me have a quiet space to relax in I'm able to go outside a lot which helps me I can control myself from the inside instead of through fear and threat of pain from others. Yes. What a concept. I have paid work that is on my level, and staff treat me like the grown-up I am. They respect me as an individual. If I need or want to talk to them, I can. We can socialize and talk about movies and things all we want. These small things made me feel human and happy again. Adversives are not okay. Amen. There is never an excuse to use them. Amen. We are people. JRC treated us as subhuman, as an exception to the rule. I constantly considered suicide when I was at JRC. I would have. There are some people that enjoy hurting others and having power. And if they get a job at JRC, they are free to abuse their power. Not all the staff members were that sick, but some were, and I'm sure still are. JRC is exempt from so many rules about how people can be treated. There is no safety net for those trapped there. There is no agency you are allowed to call. This makes it so very dangerous and open for misuse and abuse. I was considered a difficult student at JRC, yet when I left, I was able to do well and get so much better in another kind of program. I am now working on getting into independent living, something I never thought I would be able to do. The real truth about JRC and their use of the GED and other adversive needs to be told. The actual truth from those that were there. I have read other survivors' stories, and they are true. The JRC always denies the accounts, but they are true. When I was at JRC, I was silenced and hidden, but now I am saying all I was forced to keep to myself. I have nightmares at least once a week about being shocked and afraid. I have nightmares that I can't call my mom and ask for help. Jesus. So for all those who wonder why uh, the parents don't know, because they don't let the kids tell them, okay? They have those kids in so much fear. You better smile. You better make your parent believe you're the happiest little student ever or you know what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. When I shower, sometimes I have memories of being stripped on that board. I get sad and angry. Sometimes an incident from the JRC will pop in my head and it's like it's happening again. Sometimes when I'm having a rough day, I even feel like I'm about to get shocked and I have to look at my legs to see there are no electrodes or wires. Aversives must be banned with no exceptions. It will always be abuse and lead to even more abuse. Aversives used on vulnerable people must never be an option. There are other ways to help people, even those who hurt themselves. It is not about controlling people, but about understanding them, accepting their difference, and finding ways to work around the problem. It is being patient to understand what is making someone react, and changing the situation so they are comfortable. Aversives need to be made a permanent part of history. Amen. So we're going to talk about this a little bit here. Hear what you say. Hear what you say. Literally, they are so-called treating behaviors, doing absolutely nothing to see what is behind those behaviors. Or if it is a sensory issue, that is popping up, that is causing distress, what is something that we may be able to use in order to reduce the effect that that sensory issue that is popping up is having on a person? No, they would punish them for being affected by the sensory issue popping up that was causing agitation and, in some cases, actual physical pain. 
Yeah. When I say punished for being disabled, that is exactly what I mean. That is exactly what this place does. It tortures you because you're disabled and you dare to exist. It tortures you because you are disabled and different and dare to exist. So they are going to control you. They are going to torture the disability out of you. Mm -hmm. And they use fear and intimidation on those who come out of that center in order to get them to keep quiet. They also use that same fear to keep students quiet and pretending to be happy whenever their parents come to visit so that their parents don't really know what's happening or what's going on. And they've got these parent association with JRC. Those parents are so damn fooled that they won't even listen to the victims because they have those JRC doctors in their ears saying, well, they're disabled. They don't know what's really happening and they lie. Yeah. They've drank the Kool-Aid. It's practically a cult. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and close out with this thought. When did we say, believe all victims unless they're disabled? When did that become acceptable? And why do we accept that? Why do we just accept that people with mental issues or disabilities are somehow less credible in their abuse stories and stories of torture than those of our abled peers? We need to think about that and that needs to change. So that is my final thoughts this morning. We're gonna go ahead and close out. We don't get many, many views on this channel, especially on this subject. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So folks, feed that algorithm. Please hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the comments. Fill out those tin plates. And if you haven't signed the change.org, shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. Get it done. <laughs> I do appreciate your time this morning. And as always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.